Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 183 Shizun, I Quit Spicy Food Seeing that there was no one around, Mo Ran pulled him to the alley behind the Menpo Hall. The alley was extremely narrow. If he went in and Mo Ran stood there, there wouldn't be much space left. Chu Wanning stared at him with a peach in his hand. Perhaps it was the continuous restraint that finally made this hot-blooded man a little restless. His chest rose and fell slightly as he stared at Chu Waning with bright black eyes. Suddenly, he reached out and hugged him in his arms. My peach. But it was too late. The juicy fruit was knocked away. It rolled to the corner and stopped moving. She's on. The man's hot breath lingered in his ears. It was so tormented, so fervent, but his tone was still clear. There was a hint of forbearance in the boiling heat. His voice was slightly scorched by the flames of desire, but he still kept himself from doing anything else. He just hugged him and hold him in his arms. His voice was low and hoarse. I feel terrible. Chu Wanning suddenly opened his eyes wide. Why? What's wrong? Mo Ran was stunned at first, then he laughed. He grabbed Chu Wanning's hand which was about to touch his forehead and kissed it. Chu Wanning frowned and said anxiously, If you're sick, you need to find Elder Tan Lang. That winter pickle is useless. Mo Ran said helplessly. It's better to look for the cabbage instead. Chu Wanning finally reacted. His face immediately tensed up. He flew into a rage out of humiliation. Who are you calling a cabbage? Mo Ran laughed, my bad. He paused, then stared at Chu Wanning with his moist black eyes. But she's on, I miss you. Chu Wanning was hugged by him and looked at by such a pair of eyes. He had nowhere to vent his anger from being called a cabbage. Instead, his ears turned red. After a while, he said. We were eating at the same table just now. That doesn't count. She's on, I just want to stay with you a little longer. Every time you finish eating, you always leave immediately by yourself. You walk into the crowd and I can't even touch you. There was a weak grievance in the man's voice. Stay with me for a little while. Don't go back yet. Hearing such statements, Chu Wanning's cheeks became increasingly hot, as his heart got flustered. Moreover, the aura on his body was so blazing, so vigorous, so fervent. He was tightly hugged by him, and in the end, he couldn't say a single word. Mo Ran murmured, She's on, let me hug you a little longer. It was not easy for the two of them to be alone in Shi Sheng Peak. For the two of them, it was actually hard to find the time to be alone together. More so at this period of time. The number of visits from various sects has increased significantly. Shui Zhongyang would often drag Chu Wanning in such meetings for his valuable feedback so they had even less opportunity to be together. It was even harder when they sit close to each other during meals as they were well aware of the crowd around them. They were afraid that the slightest carelessness would let the sharp-eyed disciples saw something strange. Therefore, ever since they confessed, even the opportunity to hold hands was extremely rare. After restraining himself for so long, it was no wonder that Mo Ran couldn't bear it no longer. As dusk deepened, more and more people came out of the Menpo Hall. A group of laughing female cultivators walked by the side of the alley and accidentally bumped into Elder Suanji's firelight mouse. The little mouse with a burning spiritual fire at the tip of its tail squeaked and scurried around, causing everyone to laugh. Chu Wanning felt uneasy in such a lively atmosphere. He pushed Mo Ran. Go out. Just a little longer. More people will come in a little while. Go out. In the end, Chu Wanning was someone innocent and pure. If he didn't show him his true colors, even if his thoughts were disturbed, he wouldn't be confused. Mo Ran sighed. As Chu Wanning wished, he let go of the arm that was tightly hugging him. Chu Wanning immediately walked out of the dark and narrow alley, then turned back to look at him. What are you still doing there? Mo Ran coughed softly, 
as if he was a little embarrassed. He said, Shizun, you can go first. I'll stand here for a while. Chu Wanning was rather puzzled. Just as he was about to say something, he saw that Mo Ran's handsome tan face seemed to be a little red. His bright black eyes were also somewhat flickering, like the nervous stars in the clear night sky. He suddenly understood something. His gaze unconsciously moved downwards. When he saw a certain part, he heard buzzing in his ears. It was as if he had been stung by a scorpion. His face and ears flushed red as he said, You, you're simply. Before he could finish speaking, he suddenly flung his sleeves and angrily left. Green smoke seemed to be rising from the top of his head. These days of hiding and dodging continued for more than ten days. No matter how docile this tamed wolf Mo Ran was, the blood in his bones was accumulating more and more fiercely. It was as if a storm was about to come. Every day, he would cultivate in the morning and meditate in the evening. He stared at Elder Yu Heng on the high platform. The desire in his eyes couldn't be suppressed and it was becoming more and more obvious by the day. When one is infatuated with someone, even if they did their utmost to conceal it, some things were just impossible to hide. Sometimes, Shui Meng would inadvertently glance at Mo Ran's eyes and be startled. He would look at Mo Ran and then looked at Chu Wanning. He was a simple-minded person and his thoughts are not the kind to veer into bended path. However, the more he looked at them, the more confused he became. He couldn't determine the kind of emotions that were flashing in Mo Ran's eyes. It made Shui Meng felt subconsciously uncomfortable but he couldn't pinpoint exactly what he was uncomfortable about. One day during morning lessons, Shui Meng took advantage of the fact that there was no one around to call out to Mo Ran in a low voice, Hey, let me ask you something. What is it? Is she unill? Mo Ran was shocked, Why do you say that? How is she unsick? How come I don't know? You don't know? Shui Meng touched his chin, That's strange. Then why do you keep looking at him recently? When you look at him, you looked in a thoughtful way. After hearing Shui Meng's words, Mo Ran finally understood. He coughed lightly and lowered his eyes, What are you talking about? Don't curse Shizun. I'm not cursing him. After a pause, he muttered, Then why do you keep looking at him? You're wrong. I'm not blind. You must be blind. If I'm blind then you're a dog. The two men in their twenties were arguing childishly. On the high platform, Chu Wanning heard the commotion and looked down coldly. The two men suddenly shut up and lowered their heads to copy and recite the medicinal dossiers in their hands. However, their elbows were still touching as they secretly competed with each other. After a while, Mo Ran suddenly loosened his grip and pulled his hand away without warning. Shui Men used too much force and suddenly lost the resistance from Mo Ran's side. With a clang, he fell directly onto Mo Ran. Mo Ran slapped his thigh and laughed, ha 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 ha. Shui Men was furious. He didn't care about the quiet atmosphere and shouted loudly, shameless. You tricked me. Mo Weiyu, Shui Ziming. Seeing that his disciple was about to make a fool of themselves again, Chu Wanning was slightly angry. He raised his phoenix eyes and frowned, saying in a low voice, If you want to quarrel, go outside. Don't disturb everyone else here. Yes, she's on. Mo Ran immediately calmed down. Shui Meng also reluctantly stopped bickering. However, he was still a little angry. He felt that his fall just now was a little embarrassing. After thinking about it, he cut a small piece of paper and wrote a few big words on it. He rolled it up and threw it at Mo Ran's table. Thud. Unexpectedly, the thrown paper ball flew over Mo Ran's head. A slender, white hand picked it up from the open pages of the book. She may unfolded the crumpled paper in confusion and glanced at the words written on it. You're staring at me. Do you have any ulterior motives? Do you want Chizun to teach you a unique mental cultivation method? There was also a dog drawn at the bottom of the paper with a heavy black cross on it. Shimei. 
After the morning lesson was over, Xue Zhenyang found Chu Wanning. He said that after several investigations in Lanyi, it was confirmed that because of the tribulation fire, no one could live on that land for the next five years. Therefore, the refugees from the upper cultivation world now needed to be settled in the villages and towns under the jurisdiction of Shi Sheng Peak. I've already asked people to help settle the ones I brought back in Vucheim Town, Fenhe Town, and Beishui Village. There are also the ones that you and Mo Ran brought back. Xue Zhenyang said, Vucheim Town can't accommodate so many additional residents permanently. It's better to take half of them to Yuliang Village. There's a shortage of young people there. Chu Wanning said, it's indeed more appropriate to put them in Yuliang Village. Xue Zhenyang nodded, Yuliang Village isn't far. You should go there as early as possible. There are a lot of people to be settled. Meng Er is not good with handling matters related to this so I will let Shi Mei go with you. He would be of more help. Chu Wanning said. All right. For the villagers of Yuliang village, Chu Wanning and Mo Ran could be considered old acquaintances. The village chief received the news from Xue Zhenyang two days ago, so he had been waiting at the entrance of the village early in the morning, waiting for the arrival of the cultivation masters from Shi Sheng Peak. Miss Linger was also there. After not seeing her for a long time, she had become a lot prettier. When she saw Mo Ran, she hurriedly greeted him. Mo Ran was a little surprised, but he still smiled, Miss, you didn't go to the upper cultivation world. No. Fortunately, I didn't go. If I went to Lin Yi, I'm afraid I would have lost my life. Ling Er patted her full chest with lingering fear, I think it's better stay in the lower cultivation world. Besides, things are improving in the village day by day. In the past, we were looking forward to going to the upper cultivation world, but this is the first time I've seen people from the upper cultivation world come here. I won't go anymore. That's right. Someone heard her and echoed. The world is round and things could turn around. Under Lord Shui, who knows. Maybe in 10 or 20 years, people from the upper cultivation world would be the ones running to our side. She may said gently, the lower cultivation world has been suffering for hundreds of years but as the saying goes, the other side of the river is the ocean. After the hardships, there will be a time to live a good life. As he spoke, he distributed the herbal ointment that Madame Wang had asked him to bring to the common folks. Mo Ran also took a jar and looked at it carefully. He was surprised to find the serpent emblem of the Gaiyu Ye sect. This is, medicine made by the Hanlin Divine Hand. Yes, a few days ago, sect master Zhang sent someone to deliver it. Chu Wanning heard and said, Zhang Shi offered better and more sensible things than the Huohuang Pavilion. There are many ghost and evil spirits in the area of Shu and what we lack most are elixirs and miraculous medicine. If these kind of things were sent over to the sect then sect leader Shui would be more than happy to accept them. Mo Ran muttered, isn't that so? But these elixirs refined by the Hanlin divine hands, they exaggerated it a little. They are not that miraculous that they can revive the dead or grow new bones. That. He didn't say the second half of the sentence that Zhang Shi is really rich and will only be getting richer. Back in the Xianyuan Pavilion, Chu Wanning bought a few jars of taper scented dew for the price of 2.5 million gold. However, with a wave of sect leader Jiang's hand, a carriage full of taper scented dew could be freely given to them. Mo Ran silently put the jar of medicine back into the pouch and sighed inwardly. He thought to himself, Rufeng sect is indeed finished and the next to emerge as the foremost sect in the cultivation world is probably the Gaiyu Ye sect which is so far above Shi Sheng Peak. It will probably take another hundred years for the lower cultivation world to rise. After busying themselves for most of the day, the food and clothing of the former Lin Yi residents were all arranged. The houses where they would stay has all been cleaned by evening time. The three cultivators from Shi Sheng Peak were ready to leave but the village chief insisted that they stay for dinner. Facing such kindness, it would be impolite to refuse, so they followed the village chief to the ancestral hall of Yuliang village. 
The ancestral hall of the village was where important ceremonies were being held such as weddings and funerals. On New Year's Eve, the villagers would eat New Year's Eve dinner and watch a play on the Lantern Festival either inside the ancestral hall or in the courtyard outside the ancestral hall. On this day, because many of the former Lanyi residents of the upper cultivation world were going to live in Yuliang village from now on, the villagers prepared more than 30 tables of dishes to entertain them. They cooked sheep, slaughtered cows, steamed rice, and boiled noodles. The village chief actually remembered that Chu Wanning didn't eat spicy food, so he especially arranged a table of light dishes and invited Elder Yu Heng and some people from Lin Yi who weren't used to eating spicy food to sit down on the same table. Most of those people were saved by Mo Ran and Chu Wanning, so they already knew this aloof cultivator when they were on Flying Flower Island. However, knowing him was one thing but dining with him was another. Sitting in the same table as him made them very nervous. Out of etiquette, they couldn't get up and change seats, so the meal was very awkward. The other tables were chatting and drinking, but this table was eating in silence. No one uttered a word. Mo Ran was a good cook, so he helped in the kitchen. When the last dish was served, he came out of the kitchen. His honey-colored face was sweaty, his eyes were bright, his nose was high, and his handsome appearance stood out among the crowd. The soup dumplings are here. The auntie held a large tray full of small steamers and continuously shouted loudly, There are soup dumplings on every table. There are soup dumplings on every table. There are twelve soup dumplings in all, six of them are with shepherd's purse and the other six are with mushroom. Eat them while they're hot. Mo Ran smiled and helped the auntie pass the soup dumplings to each table. Thank you, Cultivator Mo. Thank you, Cultivator Mo. A child who was familiar with Mo Ran shouted, Thank you, Brother Weeyu. Ling Air's eyes were fixed on him. Although she knew that this person didn't like her and wouldn't like her, she still couldn't help but want to look at him. Humph, just looking at him should be alright. Thank you. Cultivator Mo. When the soup dumplings were delivered to her table, she thanked him softly with red lips. Mo Ran smiled at her. It was a bright smile that didn't hide or have any ambiguity. Ling Air, who wanted to take the opportunity to peek some more but felt a little embarrassed. And so, she lowered her head shyly. There were only two tables left. Chu Wanning was at one table and Shi Mei was at the other. The two of them had different tastes, so they didn't sit together. Mo Ran delivered the soup dumplings to Chu Wanning's table first. Chu Wanning frowned and said, You should stop and have dinner yourself before the food get cold. When he delivered the soup dumplings to Shi Mei's table, Shi Mei smiled and said, Aran is really skillful. Thank you. Haha, <laughs> it's just so so. I just helped Auntie a little. Mo Ran said and turned around. She may thought that he was going to get the bowls, so he made some space on the bench and said, Sit here. I asked for an extra bowl at this table. You don't have to get yourself one. Mo Ran was stunned for a moment, then he scratched his head and said with a smile, I'll sit at Shizun's table. When did you stop eating spicy food? Only those who don't eat spicy food sit there. Yes. I quit eating spicy food. Mo Ran said. Shi Mei was silent for a while. His eyes were dark, but he suddenly smiled and said, I've heard of people quitting drinking and smoking, but I've never heard of anyone quitting chili. Actually, it's not really quitting. It's more like, if you don't eat something for too long, you won't want to eat them anymore. Mo Ran waved at Shi Mei and ran to the kitchen with a smile. I'm going to get the bowls. Sit down and eat. If you don't eat, the soup dumplings will get cold. End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun. Chapter 184. Shizun, I've made you wait for a long time. Mo Ran returned quickly to Chu Wanning's table. In addition to a full bowl of rice, he also carried a lunchbox with him and sat down next to Chu Wanning. Chu Wanning was slightly surprised and hesitatingly asked, You, aren't you going to Shi Mei's table? 
Mo Ran was startled. Why would I go to that table? Hearing this, Chu Wanning's mood suddenly became happy. He lowered his eyes and coughed lightly. I thought the food over there would suit your taste. Mo Ran saw that the tips of his ears were slightly red and suddenly realized something. Chu Wanning wasn't jealous, right? His heart throbbed at the thought and he smiled. He whispered in his ear, wherever you are, that's where I like. Chu Wanning's ears were completely red this time. His knee was originally leaning against Mo Ran's, but now he felt even more sensitive and wanted to move away. Mo Ran didn't let him do so. Under the cover of the table, he held Chu Wanning's leg. You. His voice attracted the attention of others. What's wrong with the cultivation master? Chu Wanning tried to cover up his reaction by forcing himself to act calm as he said, it's nothing. Mo Ran held back his laughter. He felt that Chu Wanning was really interesting. He really didn't intend to do anything ridiculous or lecherous. After all, it would be like killing 500 enemies while sacrificing a thousand of his own. He just didn't want Chu Wanning to be so far away from him. So, he grabbed Chu Wanning's leg and childishly pulled him back, wanting him to lean on him. Chu Wanning moved away again only to be pulled him back again. In the end, Chu Wanning couldn't take it anymore. He kicked him under the table, but at the same time, he didn't move away anymore. Mo Ran laughed. Chu Wanning said, there must be something wrong with you. The two of them ate afterwards. Mo Ran first looked at Chu Wanning's bowl. Sure enough, there were only a few simple vegetables and a piece of tofu in it. The soup dumplings had already been eaten by the other oblivious children at the table. Mo Ran handed him the small bamboo lunchbox. What's this? Mo Ran whispered, steamed dumpling, six crab row and six shrimps. I made it especially for you. SHH, keep quiet. Eat them quickly. I knew that when you're on the table, you can never win against others in grabbing food. The fact that he was the only one on the table who was eating from a bamboo lunchbox was too obvious. Chu Wanning felt a little embarrassed and didn't start eating again. However, when he saw Mo Ran's dark eyes looking at him with such sincerity and there was even some flour powder on his cheeks, he couldn't bring himself to deny him any further. What's more, the words specially made for you sounded very touching. Chu Wanning didn't say anything. After a while, he silently opened the lunchbox and then put the lid of the bamboo box up. He started to eat the delicious and hot crab roe. The rich and hot soup flowed out from the delicate dough, soaking into his heart and making him feel warm. Is it good? The man looked at him, hoping to get an approval. Chu Wanning bit his chopsticks and said, It's not bad. You try one too. I'm not eating it. It's all for you. Mo Ran smiled. His black eyes were bright and warm. It's good that you like it. Why don't you try another shrimp one? The man was focused. The flower on his cheeks set off his pair of black eyes, making him look even more earnest and cute. Chu Wanning was still a little confused by Mo Ran's choice. He didn't understand why he gave up on Shi Mei and turned to him. But at this moment, Mo Ran's eyes were too pure and determined. It was as if they couldn't look on anyone else. It was enough to reassure anyone who was stared at like that to be at ease. After dinner, the village chief invited everyone to watch a play outside the ancestral hall. The stage was set up by the river. The sound of copper cymbals rang out, and the Huqin bean to be played. On the stage, Wen Shen, Dan Xiao, Shen Xiao, Painted Face, and Clown Xiao appeared on the stage one after another. The play was lively. Their sleeves danced and their faces changed. Xiao Er grabbed Cai Fijin's fire lock. With a rosin nozzle in his mouth, he raised his head and glared angrily. In an instant, a raging fire surged, shining brightly on the pearls and jade, winning the cheers of the audience. Chu Wanning didn't want to watch this kind of play. First, it was because the tricks that the common folks employed were too clumsy. He could see through the trick at a glance, 
making it less fun and exciting for him. Second, it was because the audience was jostling shoulder to shoulder. Lively people would crowd around him that he couldn't enjoy it. He wasn't interested in it. She may wasn't interested either. Both of them planned to leave. Moran didn't say anything. He walked beside them but he looked longingly back at the stage. She may said gently, let's go. If we go back too late, sect leader will be worried. All right. Moran didn't say anything. He lowered his head and followed. But after a few steps, he heard Chu Wanning ask faintly, do you want to watch it? It's about Wan Kai and Shi Chong competing in wealth. It's quite interesting. He didn't say that he wanted to watch it, nor did he say that he didn't want to watch it. But Chu Wanning quietly listened to what was being implied and said, then let's go back and watch it before we leave. Shi Mei was slightly startled, she's on, we've already delayed handing in the appointment by staying for dinner. If we stay to watch the play. Chu Wanning said, we will just watch this play. We'll leave after we're done. Shi Mei was very gentle. He smiled and said, all right, we'll do as Shi Zun said. Thus, the three of them returned near the stage and squeezed into the lively crowd. Many of the refugees from Lin Yi had never been to Sichuan before, so they had never watched Sichuan opera. They were shocked by the fluttering sleeves and the dazzling changes of faces. The small children couldn't see the stage. Some were carried by the adults on their necks, while others climbed on the stage and looked around. The king gave me the coral jade tree, the light of treasure. On the stage, Wan Kai and Shi Chong tried their best to cling to the riches and splendor. Their faces and necks were red as they tried to push each other down. Fifty miles of purple silk road home, who can stop it? Good. Ha ha ha, one more scene. The eyes of the people watching the play were shining. The children had pastries stuffed in their mouths. They freed their hands and clapped with the adults. This was not the upper cultivation world where there were all kinds of manners and decorum. No one would stupidly sit and watch the show while coldly sipping a mouthful of jasmine tea with the attendants massaging their backs and the maidservants fanning their hands. The cold air below the stage forced the performers on the stage to lose interest in singing. It was dull, and the song Farewell My Concubine sounded like a tortoise parting with a cricket. These people were simple and unsophisticated, but they were in full swing. They were all standing and clapping, standing on their tiptoes and shouting. It was very rowdy and lively. Chu Wanning stood in the middle of the crowd, not knowing how to deal with it. A boring person like him would probably rather sit in the upper cultivation world and listen to the tortoise parting with a cricket than watch Wan Kai fight Chi Chong in the crowd. There was another person who didn't like this kind of intense excitement. She may stood for a while. He seemed to have a headache from the sound of the Suana symbols, but he still stood there good-naturedly. Until a big man next to him saw the scene of breaking the coral jade tree. He jumped up and clapped fiercely. He accidentally knocked over the tea that another man was drinking. The hot tea splashed all over Shime. Ah! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cultivation master, I'm really sorry. Please forgive my clumsy hands and feet. She may hurriedly said, it's all right, it's not a problem. But his clothes were dirty and wet. He sighed and said to Chu Wanning helplessly, she's on, how about I go back first? I have to change my clothes. I'll report the result of the assignment to the sect leader. Chu Wanning said, all right, be careful on your way back. She may smiled said goodbye to Mo Ran and left first. Chu Wanning thought that his escape technique was not bad. Should he find someone to crash into? This way, he wouldn't have to be overwhelmed by the crowd. While he was deep in thought, he suddenly heard a burst of cheers from the crowd. He lifted his eyes and looked toward the stage. The actor playing Wan Kai was so enraged that his long beard was fluttering in anger. Holding the fire packet in his mouth, he suddenly spat out a huge flame into the river. Boom! The river rippled, 
and the sparkling water was soaked into orange red. Wow. Good. Spit it out again. Do it again. Chu Wanning didn't understand. What was there to see? If Shuemang came over, he could create fire burst a hundred or a thousand times better without using a torch. While he was uninterested, he suddenly saw how Mo Ran smiled at the play. That tall man didn't need to stand on tiptoes at all. He just stood there calmly, and no one could block his line of sight. His handsome face was illuminated by the firelight. His dimples were deep, and his gaze was gentle but profound. It seemed that there was something in his mind that no one could see clearly. Sensing Chu Wanning's gaze, he turned around and smiled even more brightly. His black eyes seemed to be a little wet, but it also seemed like there was nothing there, that it was just Chu Wanning's imagination. When I was young, I often went to the theater to watch this play. Every time, I would be chased away by the manager before the play was over. Moran's tone was casual and calm. This is the first time I've listened to the whole play. She's on, did you like it? Chu Wanning looked into his eyes and finally said. Hmm, it was not bad. Moran's smile bloomed. The night seemed to have brightened up. On the stage, there was a faint chanting. It started and ended, and started again. Black eyebrows like smoke, indigo feathers rustling, the king is exhausted, the lowly concubine is still alive. Oh, farewell my concubine. Moran turned around and smiled. Let's go. I'm satisfied now that I've finished watching the Battle of Wealth. Let's go back. Let's watch a while more. Hmm. It's not that boring. There's no harm in watching some more of it. Moran raised his eyebrows slightly, as if he was pleasantly surprised. Then he smiled brightly. All right. Farewell my concubine, Jinchen Temple, Judgment of the Double Nail, Sitting in the Tower, Killing Pity. One scene play after another was presented. No one left. As the hours went by, the people only became more and more cheerful and energetic. A few old man was reciting along with the Yan woman on the stage. Good words keep people warm in winter, but bad words hurt people in June. At the most intense part of the play, Song Zhang suddenly battled people, winning the applause of the whole audience. The applause even overshadowed the singing of the performers on the stage. Chu Wanning was pushed and patted on the shoulder by the villagers who were drunk, but he had no way to retreat. It was not good for him to lose his temper. Just as he was in a dilemma, a pair of warm hands rested on his shoulders. He turned around and met Mo Ran's eyes. He did not know when this man had stood behind him. He smiled and brought him over, letting him lean on him so he wouldn't be disturbed by the people around him. For a moment, the laughter and the sound of gongs and drums became so distant. Chu Wanning's ears were slightly hot. He looked at Mo Ran for a moment, and finally turned his face away, unwilling to look at him again. It was just that the temperature behind him was so hot, and the man's breath was scorching. A strong chest was pressed against him and a big hand with distinct knuckles was wrapped around his shoulder. When the drum became denser, the fire-breathing play was showed again. The people's eyes were entranced as they shouted and clapped. Chu Wanning also wanted to reluctantly clap twice to pretend to be calm. But before he could raise his hand, his whole body was wrapped around by Mo Ran from behind. Perhaps it was because he felt that no one would notice, or perhaps it was because he was pushed even closer by the people around him, or perhaps it was because in such a grand scene, he especially wanted to be closer to the person he wanted and melt into him. He hated that he could not be mixed with him into one, to merge his bones and blood into him. And so Mo Ran could only lower his eyes, hug Chu Wanning from behind, encircling him in his arms. After holding his special person in his arms, he then turned his face. At the moment when the fire on the stage lit up the night sky, he kissed Chu Wanning's ear. Suddenly, the flames rose, illuminating the performer's face and burning into the hearts of the spectators. Thank you for accompanying me. 
Mo Ran whispered in his ear. His voice was low and hoarse, but very gentle. I know that you don't like it. You think too much. I like it. Mo Ran smiled lightly and did not say anything. He hugged him even tighter and rested his chin on his neck. The flames flickered and Chu Wanning suddenly wanted to ask, so he opened his mouth. Mo Ran, why did you? Ha ha ha, good. His voice was so low that it was immediately swallowed up by the clamor of the crowd. Mo Ran asked, what's that? It's nothing. Chu Wanning's face was slightly red, and then it was lightly covered by a thin layer of anger. He did not want to ask this question a second time. Asking once had used up all his strength. At this moment, he only felt very embarrassed and angry, and did not want to open his mouth again. Mo Ran was quiet for a while. He actually did not hear Chu Wanning's question clearly, but suddenly said, The person I like has always been you. Chu Wanning's heart beat so fiercely as if it wanted to jump out of his chest. It's always been you. I was too stupid. In the past, I couldn't tell my own feelings. Thump, thump, thump. His heart beat like a drum, and the sound of the cymbals on the stage was almost drowned out by the sound in his chest. I'm sorry. I made you wait for a long time. His eyes were dazzled by the fireworks and his ears were buzzing. He could not hear anything clearly as he felt as if the world was spinning around him. He did not know whether his feet were on the ground or in the clouds. Only the person behind him was real. The wind used to have no color and no trace, but now it had become the lingering scent of Moran that remained at the tip of his nose. Chu Wanning actually did not want to hear too much explanation. All he wanted was a word of affirmation from the person he loved. Now that he suddenly received this affirmation, he could no longer see his surroundings clearly. In his dizziness, he felt that everything was multicolored. He couldn't think, couldn't move, he could only feel as if he was immersed in the fierce and surging oil colors until he finally lost his five senses. End chapter Dumb Husky and his White Cat Shizun Chapter 185 Shizun's interrupted rendezvous. When Chu Wanning's consciousness returned, he could barely figure out what he was doing. He was vaguely aware that they had left the bustling crowd at some point and were now in the nearby forest. They were kissing intensely, both of their breaths were hot as both their chest heaved rapidly. The thirst was real. They were two people who had both desired each other for a long time. The way they kissed was aggressive and impatient, even a little crazy. The knot on their throats rolled as they swallowed, their lips and teeth knocked against each other. They even bled a little, but neither of them noticed. Neither of them could stop. Mo Ran pressed him against a tree. The rough wood pressed against his slightly trembling back. There seemed to be the sound of strings in the distance, but that was not important. All the sounds, no matter how far away they were, were fragmented. The only complete sound they could hear was each other's breathing. Their lips and tongues were wet, rubbing against each other coarsely. They rolled and grinned against each other without shame. Shameless. Chu Wanning was not willing to admit defeat B. He was a person who always practiced abstinent and Mo Rant's recently released pent-up desires was so strong and terrifying that it was almost like how a vicious beast that wanted to tear his throat and eat his flesh. He did not know why he had become like this. He did not know whether what he was doing was right or wrong, or what he should do next. This person who kept to etiquette, abstinence, restraint, and by himself, who would plan for the next hundred steps with every move he made, seemed to have been torn apart and destroyed at this moment. Only his stubbornness was left and this stubbornness served as the driftwood that he clung to in the sea of desire. He refused to show weakness. Even if his back was numb and his spirit seemed to have ran out of energy, he was still willing to take the initiative. He did not want to be a soft and fragile object in the palm of Mo Ran. Unfortunately, although he was ambitious, his skills were extremely poor. So poor that Mo Ran was knocked by his lips and teeth more than once. 
he couldn't control his strength and bit the tip of his tongue. Their kiss became filled with sweet blood. He was so close to the point where the more he breathed, the redder his face became and the more it became difficult to keep the air in his lungs. In the end, Mo Ran couldn't help but laughed. He felt that the hard-working Chu Wanning who doesn't really know the steps to follow really attracted a lot of affection. His heart that was once cold and hard had melted into sparkling and crystalline spring water. A 10,000-mile-long lake, suffused with fragmented golden waves that twirled around his fingers. When they parted, there was fluid linking their lips and tongues. Their eyes were filled with tenderness and desire. Mo Ran's voice was hoarse. He lowered his head and looked into Chu Wanning's eyes. His rough fingertips brushed past Chu Wanning's cheeks. Chu Wanning also knew that his performance was terrible, but he was unwilling to admit defeat. He narrowed his eyes and asked in a threatening tone, What are you laughing at? Seeing that Mo Ran didn't answer and instead the smile in his eyes only deepened, he became even more annoyed. What? Wasn't I doing it right? Mo Ran's smile finally appeared on his lips as well. He hugged him again. This time, they were hugging face to face. They were both of male figure hugging each other and therefore did not fit as how would a man and woman do. However, there were more heat between them, the sparks more intense. How is it wrong? You do everything just right, Mo Ran intimately rubbed against the top of his head and then caressed his ears and his temple. Shi Zun is the best. Then why are you laughing? Mo Ran laughed deeply again. His chest was burning hot and hard, but his heart was getting softer and tender. My reaction is not just laughing. Chu Wanning had not yet understood the deeper meaning behind this. As Mo Ran hugged him deeper and tighter, his body got pressed closer to him, from the top down to. Suddenly he felt this person's extremely fierce and vigorous passion sticking close to him. Along with the slight movement of his breathing, that feeling was so exciting, so intense, so vivid that it made his scalp tingle. His heart beat faster as he shivered. Even though he was cold, he felt warm as his throat felt tight and dry. This made Chu Wanning suddenly realize that the seemingly gentle man in front of him was actually very aggressive, very fierce, and ferocious. He was so strong that even a drop of his blood could rip apart a person's internal organs. His hair stood on end and he immediately wanted to push him away. But before he could raise his hand, Mo Ran's full and astonishingly hot lips kissed him again. Moist and warm, he sucked and licked his lips. This man's breathing was deep and hot. His fierce body also continuously stuck to Chu Wanning through the material of his clothes. Chu Wanning's mind became clouded because of this terrifying passion. Mo Ran's rough and hot tongue had already invaded his mouth, greedily kissing him, sucking his lips as if he was drunk with his body rubbing against his. Chu Wanning's legs became soft and numb. He trembled slightly from the stimulation, because of that unfamiliar feeling of powerlessness, because of that hard heat, because of that burning passion. That day, Chu Wanning didn't know how they returned to Shisheng Peak. Whatever it was, he could have only done it automatically and with no conscious thought. The only thing he remembered was that when they parted in front of the Red Lotus Pavilion, they hugged each other in the dark night and kissed each other hungrily for a long time. He hated that he couldn't swallow his lover's desire and passion. What they did was not enough, it could never be enough. Vaguely, he remembered that Mo Ran begged him in a low voice and asked him to allow him to sleep in the Red Lotus Pavilion that night. Chu Wanning probably used the last of his consciousness to gasp for breath and barely regain some of his rationality. He didn't agree. He didn't know why he didn't agree. Maybe it was because of his inexplicable self-esteem or maybe it was because he has been alone for far too long that he couldn't adapt quickly or maybe it was because he was rigid and pedantic. He felt that all of this was ridiculous and unrealistic. Although it was infinitely tempting, he was caught off guard and things happened too fast. With great difficulty, he struggled to break free from his lust and Mo ran. He then pushed open the door and entered. As soon as he entered the pavilion, 
he understood for the first time in his life what it meant to not even dare to look back. He knew that his string was stretched to the limit. If he turned back now, he was afraid that he would fall short of success. His lust would burst and he wouldn't be able to push the person in front of him away. They would be burned to ashes and not even a speck would be left. When he went back to take a bath and change his clothes, Chu Wanning realized that his underwear was wet. The cloying sweet fleshy scent made his face and ears turn red. He was at a loss on what to do. He stayed in the same place for a long time. He couldn't help but think, how could it be like this? How could it be like this? In his whole life, he had never lost his self-control like this. He had never been so passive before. Damn it, what should he do? In the past, whenever Chu Wanning encountered a difficult problem, his subconscious reaction was to look for a solution in books. Therefore, he had read a lot of books since he was young. His knowledge was vast. This was the first time that the voluminous books couldn't give him an answer. Therefore, he had been caught blind and completely at a loss as to what to do. Fortunately, Moran seemed to understand him very well. After being rejected once, he understood Chu Wanning's confusion and anxiety. He didn't push him to do anything he wasn't ready to. However, the intimacy between them didn't stop at holding hands. They would fiercely kiss in the alley behind the Menpo Hall. After night fell, they would go to a deserted forest and rub their foreheads together. Mo Ran wouldn't talk much but he would answer whatever Chu Wanning asked. But what he didn't say, his eyes would speak for him. Those dark eyes of him were filled with sweet words and tenderness. It was just him who was very stupid. He didn't know how to express himself and he couldn't express himself well. Oftentimes, Moran was more willing to do it directly rather than talk about it. And strangely enough, Chu Wanning felt that Moran could always sense what he wanted. They had only just gotten together but occasionally, Chu Wanning felt as if Moran had known him so intimately for many years. As the days passed, the time they spent together kissing and hugging became longer and longer and the passion between them just burned hotter. Almost every time they separated, both of them could feel the urge to continue. Chu Wanning was fine. After all, he had been cultivating for many years. His willpower was extraordinary. However, Mo Ran was different. He and Chu Wanning cultivated a different kind of heart technique. Moreover, he was young and full of vigor. Every time after their tryst, he couldn't immediately get up and go back. It was too obvious. If the clothes couldn't hide it, people would easily see the clues. It was really too painful for him to endure. That day, after dinner, they entangled for half an hour in a remote place near the back of the mountain. However, there was an elders assembly that night. Chu Wanning calculated the time and when he felt that the moment has come, he told Mo Ran that he had to leave. However, Mo Ran calculated the time and felt that there were still some moments to spare. He was rather unwilling to let him go. The way he refused was rather passionate. He didn't use words but directly kissed him again. Mo Ran sat on one of the rocks in the abandoned garden by the forest. He hugged Chu Wanning and made him face him while he was sitting on his lap. In this position, the person sitting below would normally look shorter than the person sitting on the lap. However, Mo Ran have a tall stature. In this position, he was at the same height as Chu Wanning. He kissed Chu Wanning for a long time, wet and sodden. From his lips to his neck, Mo Ran nibbled on Chu Wanning's Adam's apple. Hearing the other party's low and suppressed breathing, Mo Ran felt even more excited. It was as if his heart was on fire. Chu Wanning couldn't take it anymore. He wanted to get away. He wanted to leave. However, his waist and legs has gone soft and refused to listen to him. Recently, Mo Ran had taken a liking to this position very much as this way, he could hug him so intimately. The tension made his whole body numb. Chu Wanning could even imagine what kind of heart palpitating scene it would be if he didn't have clothes that barely separated their skin. 
Perhaps it was because he was really close to his limit that no matter how intense the kiss was, it couldn't relieve his desire. Instead, it added fuel to the fire. When Mo Ren released his wet red lips, his eyes were moist. He breathed heavily, his Adam's apple moving seductively. He focused on Chu Wanning, as if he wanted to say something. However, in the end, he didn't say anything. He just fiercely bit down on Chu Wanning. He really bit him that Chu Wanning felt a bit pained. However, instead of feeling hurt, it only incited him more. It was as if needles were pricking his acupuncture points. He trembled. The man was trapped by love. His throat was filled with fragmented and indistinct whimpers. He hugged the person in his arms and stroked that ink black hair. He only felt that his shizun was so good. It made people want to love him wholeheartedly. He also felt that his shizun was so enticing. It made people want to fiercely and use all their strength to bully him. In the tranquil air, the heady atmosphere became thicker and thicker. Chu Wanning raised his head and slightly closed his trembling eyes. He felt very unsatisfied. This kind of hug and kiss was already like scratching an itch through one's boots. If he felt this way, then it could only be worse with this young man who was hugging him. The corners of Mo Ran's eyes were burning red and slightly moist. He opened his mouth in a low voice. His voice was hoarse and laced with restraint and grievance. She's on. I beg you, I can't take it anymore. What did he want to do when he couldn't take it anymore? Chu Wanning thought of those fragmented and blurry dreams. His tailbone trembled slightly. He didn't make a sound. His ears were extremely red. Couldn't take it anymore, what did he want to do? Before Mo Ran could once again held his red and swollen lips, Chu Wanning said in a low voice, almost inaudible, then, don't do it here. Don't do it here? Did it mean that he could do more if they were somewhere else? Mo Ran suddenly raised his head. He was pleasantly surprised. Then, he fiercely kissed him again. He actually wanted to hold him like this and stand up. Chu Wanning only felt extreme embarrassment. He couldn't restrain his anger. Put me down. Mo Ran put him down but he didn't forget to kiss him. She's on, where do you want to go? Before Chu Wanning had time to speak, he heard a rustling sound from the nearby haystack. He was suddenly startled. His mind immediately became clear. He quickly pushed Mo Ran away. The two people had just separated when they saw a person walking out from the dark of the bamboo forest. In his hand was a faintly swaying lantern. The hem of his clothes fluttered in the wind. That person was silent for a long time and then he spoke. Even though it was suppressed, his voice was still filled with astonishment and bewilderment. You, why are you here? End chapter.